This new decade kicked off with global challenges that impacted every single industry, and construction was no exception to this. But if we can take a silver lining in the COVID pandemic, I think it would be the rapid acceleration of the digital transformation that has occurred. I'm Todd Wyant, host of the Bridging the Gap podcast, sponsored by Applied Software. We're focusing in on recent guests of the podcast who have come on to share their insights and their expertise in how the COVID pandemic has impacted the construction industry and really the aftermath of where we go from here. Uh, what do you see as some of the workflow changes, whether in manufacturing or construction, that will come out of this current disruption? Okay, what are your key priorities? Um, is it learning right now? Like, do you need to get your teams up to speed on something that they've been that has been on the back burner? This is a great time to like catch up on, you know, continuous learning. There is a lot of work coming. It's just. How do we prioritize? And it's almost breaking it up into chunks of like big rocks versus little rocks. And I think that's a great way to start versus feeling like overwhelmed, like, oh my gosh, like, because <laughs> it's easy to get, you know, go down that path. Oh, yeah. Right. So I think just kind of centering, taking a moment, balancing, recalibrating, getting with your team, just huddling and talking about it. I think that kind of gives clarity and then like purpose. a little bit more you know comfortable <laughs> yeah so we're all in, in the midst of this social distancing with COVID-19 disruption going on That's how right. do you see yeah how do you see that serving as a catalyst for digital transformation so I think this whole thing is really shedding a light on our inability to, to go digital and go remote. I mean, obviously construction, you can't, but you know, certain things we can, we can do more things offsite and it's, it's certainly pushing that. Uh, but construction by nature is a physical activity. So you need to have guys there, but everybody else that, that supports that system, really a lot of, of you know, our, our folks on the technology side can do a lot of their work from home, but uh, we find these little pinch points where you can't, and uh, it's really exposing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious at the longer term ramifications of all this with everybody just totally up in the air trying to figure it out remote. And I think there's going to be some things that people were like, oh, yeah, that was really good. And then there's other things that's like, that was totally inefficient. Why would we ever go back to that way of thinking again? Well, and, and there's cultural things, too. Like uh, prior to the, this pandemic, uh, I was never one to typically turn my camera on. Uh, because oh, yeah. it's that, and, and it's interesting because in Australia, everybody turns their cameras on and a lot of Europe and UK as well. But for some reason, the US, we, we don't like turning our cameras on. Right. Uh, but ever since the pandemic, I've been just, just been turning mine on. It's kind of an interesting social experiment to see, all right, who, who else is going to turn theirs on too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. What do you think are some of the positives that have actually come out of all this disruption. Well, we had a couple of departments within our company that just could not go paperless. They said they can't, they can't do it, they can't do it. And um, now they figured out how they could do it. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have any choice. Us baby boomers were having a hard time understanding how people could be productive working remotely. And so we weren't really as willing to be quite as flexible. I would say we are okay. We already had two or three people that were working remotely that lived in different areas. but But we still overall felt like you really can't do your job remotely. And maybe we're coming to the realization that to a certain degree, you can do your job remotely. And we want to bring people back for the culture, but we, we're saying, hey, a couple days a week, can you be here? But you can go ahead and work from home a few days a week as well. Mm -hmm. so. What do you see as the, kind of the future state of the industry coming out if we we're looking at like a year out from now. We see a lot more thought put into uh, all of the elements of construction before we actually pour concrete. I think um, I think there's a lot of uh, in the past. There's been a it's been a lot easier just to say, hey, we'll make that decision on site. You know, let's just cut it to this and we'll cut it down on site. You know, let's just take a, a lot of shortcuts, whether that be on schedule or whether that be on the design or whether that be on the actual prefab portion. 
and everything will be you know fixed on site and i think that will still be necessary there will still be elements that need to be fixed on site and the expertise needs to be there uh, however i think there will be a drive to bring all of that that a lot of that thought uh, forward into the planning process mm -hmm. um, that, that's what i would say would be a big change Big thanks to all the guests who have come on to share their expertise on the COVID impact and aftermath. Make sure to check out the Bridging the Gap podcast. You can go to our website, bridgingthegappod.com, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Keep innovating.